Behold, Batman's number one superfan, Batmite. Don't forget to mash that like button for another fulfilled request. Now, Batmite, the interdimensional pest, can be unlocked after finishing all the fetch quests, which I hate. But I'm not getting into that. After you win, proof is in the pummeling, Batmite will be yours. Okay, so his powers other than causing mischief for the Dark Knight are as follows. He can fly, hatch travel, bat grapple, flash build, and, well, glow. And that's it. Little background on our little friend here, he first appeared in Detective Comics in 1959 as part of the Bat Family. Unlike Superman's Mr. Mixiez Pidlik, ha! who's a pain from the fifth dimension, Batmite is a prominent member of the Bat Clan. Well, in the 60s at least. Adam West dodged that bullet, though with all the craziness of that series, it's strange that Batmite never showed up now, isn't it? Anyway, he appeared alongside Batgirl, not Barbara Gordon, Batwoman, Robin, Ace, and Batman for a time. They went on some crazy adventures together, and then Minus Robin vanished from existence by 1964. In 1965, DC Comics teamed him up with Mixies Pidlick a few times, and then he invaded the real world by himself in 1979. In the comic, Batmite actually threatens DC Comics to make him mainstream once again. He even has a group of protesters with signs that say, We want Batmite! Free Batmite! Or something like that. The editorial staff did this to show past support for Batmite and also to kind of make fun of the character. Even in that comic book that Batmite is featured in, he doesn't get his own book in the comic or in real life. Now, during the post-crisis age, Batmite appears as mostly a parody character now, so think like that Mad Magazine guy. He even spoofed Nightfall in a book called Mightfall. In another book, he and Mixius Pitalik fight to the death and destroy every DC universe and Elseworld in existence at that time. Pre-Crisis, DC Animated Universe, Super Friends, Frank Miller, Kingdom Come, Earth 2, and all kinds of stuff. I even think uh, Gotham by Gaslight gets destroyed, but it's of course not continuity and just kind of a fun little book. The character reappears in another storyline by Chuck Dixon. In the book, it stars Nightwing and Oracle as kind of the main lead, with the Joker and uh, Batman kind of being sub-characters. In the book, the Joker learns he is dying from a brain tumor. He somehow turns the slab prison inmates into Jokerized versions of himself and takes over the prison. So basically, Joker used to be in Arkham Asylum. He ends up in the slab, which is like a DC Supermax prison with all the kind of bad guys. But what's really funny about this story is all the thugs that he Jokerizes aren't really Gotham bad guys. There are a lot of unknowns. It was still an interesting miniseries. He also tries to force Harley to have a baby with him so he can have an heir and pass on his Joker-ness. Let me tell you, it is one bizarro story, and during the final battle between Nightwing and the Joker, at his girlfriend's request, and all the pain that Joker's caused, Dick Grayson kills the Joker. Though Batman somehow saves Joker's life. We don't really know how. He does it because he's Batman. I don't really remember uh, how this works though, but I think Nightwing killed Joker or tried to because he thought Mr. J killed Tim Drake, who actually goes missing in the miniseries. So thinking another Jason Todd thing happened, Dick goes over the edge. And I don't really know how this uh, happens or not, but uh, Nightwing has a vision about Batmite and Joker killing his girlfriend and everyone but Wonder Woman. So all the Justice League but Wonder Woman dies, so Dick snaps. This story was very, very dark, unlike the death of the family in the New 52. Almost every main character had some connection with the Joker, and that was pretty interesting. Like, what happened to Babs, Jason, and all the other stuff Joker did had some type of consequences for the characters. It wasn't just kind of like, this is Batman's enemy. It's like, no, Joker was a threat to all of DC. Well, at least on New Earth. I'll tell you, it made the story more gut-wrenching, and at one point, DC actually planned on having the Joker killed by Dick Grayson, but this idea was dropped, and this kind of later became an Elseworlds-type book. In the Batman Superman comic series, which was pretty fun read, it's a team-up book with Batman Superman, after some time since the Emperor Joker storyline, Using the remains of Mixius Pitalik's powers, Joker creates Batmite and then absorbs him to fight our heroes. It's a really odd story. Batmite then reappears in Batman R.I.P. the miniseries as a hallucination of Bruce Wayne's. 
He claims to be from the fifth dimension and helped the Batman of Zurin Ah after what uh, Simon Hunt, Milo, Thatch, and Jezebel did to Bruce Wayne's mind. Kind of killing Bruce Wayne's persona, but Batman survives because of this weird conditioning he gave himself from Tibetan monks or something. So he becomes the Batman of Super Planet X. At the end, Batmite even states to Batman that he is just Bruce's imagination and kind of the last grip on Batman's real reality. So there was a lot of psychological stuff in it. As for other media, Batmite was spoofed in Batman the Animated Series. Robin says, what is this thing? And in the show, he's a toy robot by Rossum. Batmite was actually voiced by Pee Wee Herman. I know, right? He had a very large role in Batman Brave and the Bold. He often broke the fourth wall, messed with Batman, and gave fans of the Cape Crusader lots of fan service. Like spoofing the animated series, showing different bat suits, making fun of George Clooney and just bat fans in general. Plus, he helped cancel Brave and the Bold in the final episode, Might Fall. Paul would later return to the role of Batmite in the recent Lego mini-movie, Batman Beleaguered. In it, he messes with Batman and the entire league. Once again, he's a super fan of Batman, voiced by Troy Baker. He mentions how he doesn't like the idea of Batman working with a team, yet doesn't mess with Nightwing, Damien, or Batgirl who appear in the Batcave. Go figure. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's a wrap, and does it for another LEGO lore video. Thanks for watching. If you have a character you'd like to see next, let me know in the comments below. Have a great weekend, and until we meet again, mash that like button, and yes, I have a cold. It's uh, negative two degrees outside. Later, guys.